uh, the number of glial cells in epileptic patient uh, is actually higher in schizophrenic patient. So from that uh, findings, uh, he hypothesized that um, there is uh, like a, bi a biological antagonism or there's a relation between uh, compulsion and also schizophrenia. So uh, is the connection okay? Is I everything okay? Oh, okay. Um, so uh, what happened is that um, previous slide. Hazira, previous slide. Okay, so what, what uh, he inferred is that um, by increasing the amount of glial cells, which could possibly increase, uh, improve the uh, neuron connections within the brain. So he tried to hypothesize that by inducing seizure, it can improve the brain circulation, also improve the number of glial cells. Okay, so next slide. So from then onwards, uh, he started the research. And in 1934, he actually tested the hypothesis on actual patient and actually uh, getting a favorable outcome. So from then onwards, uh, the studies on uh, induced seizure in treating psychiatric patients has been developed. And in, finally, in 1938, uh, they started using electrical stimulus, so for now, which now we call uh, ECT, uh, on actual patient. So uh, these two Italian men, they, they are the first uh, team, they are the first uh, people that actually use ECT to treat patient. And uh, actually, this patient, their patient, uh, able to achieve uh, remission after 11 times of ECT. So uh, ECT continues to develop. Uh, in 1940s, they also improve um, uh, curare. They use uh, elect, uh, muscle relaxants uh, uh, to prevent ECT associated fractures. And also further develops uh, in anesthetic aspects of so to improve uh, the ECT outcome. So they also discovered that uh, different positions of electrodes also uh, give different uh, outcomes in ECT. Okay, so next. So for indication, so the general idea of uh, ECT indication is that uh, if patients are, are presented in severe condition, so in which we require a rapid uh, definitive response, uh, such as uh, in patient presented with suicidal uh, attempt or severe mania, or uh, there is a risk of alternative treatments outweighs the benefits, meaning a uh, patient has a uh, contraindication to any pharmacological treatments uh, offered, or if patient has any past history of poor response to psychotropics and good response to ECT. And also patient have a failure to respond to pharmacotherapy in this current episode, Meaning, such as uh, open admission, we try to give patients pharmacotherapy, however, patient not responsive and becomes more severe. And also, uh, in which we re uh, require rapid relief due to deterioration of patient's condition. So, this can be seen in uh, NMS, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or it can also be because of patient preference. However, this one I'm not sure if it's practiced in Malaysia, but it's mentioned in Kaplan that patient can actually choose uh, to do ECT instead of uh, pharmaco. So doctor, is this, is this uh, similar to what we have in Malaysia? Ah, yes, definitely. Okay. So uh, the next slide. So this basically uh, when we divide into specific uh, diagnosis and the conditions uh, in which we commonly use ECT to, be, to treat this kind of patients. Okay, so for contraindication, so for contraindication, so ECT actually doesn't have any absolute contraindication. However, there are a few relative um, contraindication or sort of problem, such as in neurological uh, condition, uh, SOL, unruptured AVM, in which our concerns would be there is increase in intracranial pressure and so increased blood flow to the brain, which can exacerbate the symptoms or a patient having any cardiac conditions, as stated here, and also other sort of problems, chromocytoma, hypothyroidism. However, uh, as mentioned, this is a relative contraindication. So we can actually tackle these issues by uh, referring patients to the uh, appropriate uh, departments, and they would actually uh, optimize patient's condition prior to the procedure, so that uh, the procedure could be uh, safe and uh, effective for the, for the patient. And also anesthesia-related problem. Okay, so I think this is the important part lah kan, uh, mm -hmm. no absolute contraindication. 
So whatever problem that the patient has, we usually will refer to the uh, uh, according department and can help us to co-manage the patient. Once control, even though may not settle fully, then uh, we can proceed uh, with um, the other department to uh, helping us with the ECT. Lah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So proceed with the next uh, presenter. Moving on to the mechanism of action. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me clearly? Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Sebelum uh, tu, uh, I nak tanya siapa yang boleh jadi co-host? I takut I terlepas pandang uh, siapa yang anak admit yang terkeluar termasuk ke apa. So siapa boleh jadi co-host? Yang boleh tolong pantaukan kalau ada yang terkeluar termasuk ni. Tolong add kan. Uh, saya boleh dah ke? Siapakah tu? Norwan Saliza. Ha. Sekejap saya cari nama awak sekejap. Norwan Saliza. Uh. Okay sekejap. Uh. Eh sekejap. Hmm, Co-host. Okay. Uh, awak nampak keluar co-host kat awak tak? Boleh boleh admit orang ke apa ke? Boleh. Okey nanti kita tengoklah kalau ada kalau kalau nanti ada yang terkeluar dan termasuk dan awak tak perasan benda tu uh, kalau okey kalau saya nampak saya beritahu awak. Awak nampak ke tak sebab saya pun tak tahu how it works. Tapi saya rasa awak pun boleh tolong untuk kalau ter off recording ke apa awak boleh tolong recordkan balik. Ya? Yeah? Oh, oh, boleh. Oh, kat mana doktor kalau nak let orang masuk? Ah uh, dekat bahagian participant tu nanti dia akan ada tulis admit. Oh, okey. Ah uh, sekarang ni maknya semua dah masuklah ni, tak ada dah yang admit admit ke apa. Tapi on and off tadi ada yang terkeluar termasuk balik so nak kena readmit balik. Okey. Ya? Ah uh, okey. Right. Okey, presenter boleh sambung? Okey. If you guys wonder how ECT looks like, it looks like this picture. Okay, so moving on to the mechanism of action of electroconvulsive therapy. So as we all know that in uh, electroconvulsive therapy, we give electrical stimuli in cycle to the patient and this electrical stimuli will induce bilateral generalized seizure in which this bilateral general, generalized seizure will give rise to various theories which uh, I will explain later. So after generalized seizure, the electroencephalogram will show about 60 to 90 seconds of post-ictal suppression and then it, in about 30 minutes, it will followed by high voltage delta and theta wave and the patent of EEG will return to the pre-seizure appearance. During the course of series of uh, EC therapy treatment, the inter-ictal EEG is generally slower and of greater amplitude than usual. So if the EEG finding shows slower and greater amplitude, mm -hmm. it shows there will be clinical outcome, uh, clinical benefit outcome towards the patient. And the EEG pattern will return to the pre-treatment appearance about one month to one year after the end of the course of treatment. However, the clinical benefit to the patient is persisted quite longer. Okay. So, um, seizures induced in human brain demonstrated to be effective in treating psychiatric disorders. However, how this seizure activity in brain operates to ameliorate neuropsychiatric symptoms is still not completely, completely understood. However, various theories have been proposed on how does uh, electroconvulsive therapy benefit in improving neuropsychiatric symptoms. So when we when we give uh, the patient electrical impulse, deal with induced seizure, right? And then this seizure, uh, according to ongoing research, there are several hypotheses or theory uh, that will give that uh, the seizure induced will give a beneficial outcome toward the neuropsychiatric symptoms. So the first hypothesis is neurophysiological hypothesis. Uh, the second is neurobiochemical hypothesis. And the last one is neuroplastic changes. We will look uh, into the hypothesis one by one. Okay, for neurophysiological hypothesis, um, when ECT is given towards the patient, uh, it will induce seizure. So during the seizure, it will increase in cerebral blood flow. 
and then after the seizure following the ECT, um, it, there will be marked reduction in cerebral blood flow. So uh, these changes will lead to change in metabolism in different brain areas. These brain areas include the cortex, subcortex, thalamus, basal ganglia, and also limbic system. So this change in metabolic this change in metabolism in the brain areas related to the therapeutic outcome in improving the neuropsychiatric symptoms. Uh, the second theory in the neurophysiological hypothesis is that during the seizure, it will increase the permeability of the blood-brain barrier due to upsurge in blood pressure during the ictal phase. So, uh, by increase the permeability of the BBB, it causes certain neurochemicals get released from the circulation to the brain parenchyma. So, uh, some of the example of the neurochemical is BDNF. BDNF is a brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This BDNF is important uh, in in the maintenance of the growth of the neuron and also maturation of the neuron. Uh, other than that, this neurochemical also will lead to uh, angiogenesis and neurogenesis, and this process will improve the microenvironment of the brain in the uh, patient with psychiatric disorder. Okay, so ECT can cause effect in the cellular mechanisms. Uh, that regulate memory and also mood, so it, it can improve the symptoms. Uh, the best response is we need to give high okay. intensity. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, the highlight for this part is that if people ask you how actually ECT works, what will be the answer? Uh, it will induce the seizure and then it will uh, cause alteration in the physiological process in the brain. Is that a confirmed thing? Sorry, doctor. Is that a confirmed thing? Uh, no, it's still in uh, ongoing research. Right. So, uh, basically, until now, we don't really know exactly for sure how ECT works. But it works. So, mm. that's why then they come up with all these hypotheses what can be the uh, mechanism that make ECT works. Okay, mm. but the people say like, like oh, when we give ECT, uh, the brain just reset. Okay? And evidence shows that it works, but how it really works too young, we don't know. So we have all these hypotheses. Okay, let's continue. Okay, uh, the next hypothesis is neurobiochemical hypothesis. So in this neurobiochemical hypothesis, it is stated that electro, electroconvulsive therapy will induce seizure and this seizure will give effect on transmission of almost all the major neurotransmitter in the brain, which includes serotonin, dopamine, acetylcholine, endogenous opioid, epinephrine and norepinephrine, in which we know that uh, this uh, neurotransmitter uh, is part of the biological etiology of certain psychiatric disorder. Okay, so how does uh, it will affect the neurotransmitter in the brain? It, it by acting on the multiple level, uh, which include four process, uh, which are neurotransmitter synthesis, during neurotransmitter release, during binding of the neurotransmitter to their receptor, and during uh, their reuptake. So what factors that affecting this neurobiochemical effect? The first one uh, is genetic changes. So uh, when patients get the ECT, ECT can cause alteration in expression of genes that encode for the protein found in the brain. And this protein is responsible for the four processes of the neurotransmitter that I just uh, mentioned just now, which include the synthesis, the reuptake, the binding to the receptor. The second one is neurotrophic factor. So ECT can lead to increase in BDNF, and this BDNF is uh, responsible for increase in neuronal proliferation, maturation, and maintenance of the neuron or nerve cells in the brain. The third one is immune system. ECT temporarily increases expression of certain inflammatory cytokine genes, and this will lead to dysregulation of these immune mediators, 
which have been suggested to alter the neurotransmitter synthesis. And the last one is hormones. This involves the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Uh, for example, uh, in patients with depression, uh, one of the biological factors is due to high in cortisol level. So following the ECT, uh, it can alter the HPA axis and lead to reduce in cortisol level towards the normal level. So this will lead to the improvement of depression symptoms. The last uh, theory is the neuroplastic changes. So according to the ongoing research, in psychiatric disorder, alterations in volume of brain structures has been consistently reported. Thus, by uh, giving ECT towards the patient, it may trigger the changes in volume of the whole brain and its components, which involve the grey matter, white matter, and also the other brain structures. Okay, tak, sorry, postpone tidak? Um, okay, uh, tadi siapa? Uh, who's the co-host? Wan Saliza. Uh, okay, can you see now the participant? I'm just trying to show you in the participant. Uh, do you have the option to admit a person? Um, tak ada pun. Ada tu? You tekan tak participant. You tekan participant. Oh, one person is waiting. And then there's butang admit ataupun remove. Tak, tak ada. Tak. Oh, ada ada admit. Ada kan? Ah? Okay, so you can ha. admit person kalau I tak perasan. Alright. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry, kacau presentation. Okay, you may continue now. Okay, doctor. Okay, uh, so in neuroplastic changes, uh, ECT will trigger changes in volume of whole brain and its components. And this uh, may occur pronounced in areas with greater connection to prefrontal cortex and other limbic structures, which involve in regulation of mood. So where does the neuroplastic changes occur? Uh, the ongoing research uh, find out that uh, there are uh, some areas uh, in which neuroplastic changes might be triggered by the ECT, which are at the synapse, neurons, dendrites, vasculature, and glial cells. So in conclusion, uh, ECT will induce the seizure, and this seizure uh, have, uh, according to the ongoing research, it, uh, there are various theories come out. Uh, which are the, the three theories, neurophysiological, neurobiochemical, and neuroplastic. Uh, and this will give the therapeutic effect, uh, which is uh, it might be temporarily correct, but the abnormality occurs in the brain in the neuropsychiatric disorder. However, all of this is, uh, like doctor said, uh, it is just a theories, a theories or hypothesis that have been Okay, that's all for my part. So this is my wrapping. Continue okay. to next. Thank you. Um, okay, as for now, anybody has any question? Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, I am Hazri. Okay. I would like to ask, um, what's the thing that we want to, what symptom or well, for what I understand, ECT cause seizure, okay, by electrical means. So, what is the aim or the target? Do we, do we want to treat the symptom or the disease itself? And how it is, uh, say it is therapeutic? Okay, I think um, the disease itself, okay, for example, uh, the, the mother, um, okay, patient with schizophrenia, and then relapse after delivery and we want to treat uh, the mother as fast as we can so that the relapse schizophrenia to sepat, um, will be settled uh, fast enough so that she can take care of the baby kan? so um, when that happened uh, we are treating with ECT focusing on the target symptom for example if the patient coming with hallucination and delusion we want to reduce the symptoms because we can't treat the overall schizophrenia the schizophrenia will still be there the, the, the diagnosis will still be there we are treating the symptoms so which symptoms you are targeting for example the schizophrenia having the hallucination um, voices telling her to kill the baby for example that's worrying us kan so we will stop usually okay kalau for me even though after three ect 
symptoms maybe disappear but I still want to do at least six. I want to complete one cycle. One cycle for me minimum is six. So I will still do six and the target symptom is the hallucination because if other patient, we don't have any urgent things, we can just treat, uh, treat with um, uh, antipsychotic in the ward. But for this patient, postpartum, we want fast recovery, so we treat with ECT with looking at that target symptoms. Okay. Tapi not okay. the diagnosis of schizophrenia itself because the diagnosis will still be there. The patient even after achieve remission still need to continue taking medication because after sometimes, kalau if there's any stress ke, the patient can still relapse because the diagnosis of schizophrenia too usually is lifelong. Okay, Dr. So I understood that uh, ECT is a symptomatic treatment, is it? Yes, in general. Okay, alright. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Okay, ada soalan. Uh -huh. uh, with regards to the relative contraindication, kalau patient yang dah diagnosed, for example with Epsina, mungkin easy, easier for us to refer to specific to respective department. Tapi yang macam undiagnosed ni, do we have any screening or pre-procedure investigation? Um, usually, um, okay, kalau macam first time coming with psychosis, um, if the patient presented late age ke, kan, macam which not the common age for schizophrenia to start, of course we will, uh, we would like to, to, to rule out organic cause of uh, psychosis first before we want to say the person is having schizophrenia, kan. So we will do the CT scan, all those investigation to rule out uh, organic cause first. So kalau ada, then we will refer to medical. But if none, it's safe enough lah because we've done a CT scan, all those medical causes that are being ruled out, we say this is schizophrenia and there's any indication for ECT, then we proceed with the ECT. Okay. Okay. Any other question? No. If no, then we continue with the pre-treatment evaluation. So, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, my name is Hafiza and I will proceed with, uh, this is considered as an important step in a uh, patient with, uh, uh, we are about to do ECT for, for the patient, which is the pre-treatment evaluation. Basically, these are um, the, the, the important things that we should consider in pre-treatment evaluation. First is taking consent um, and then history and examination investigation and consultation with other speci specialties, other departments, and also um, uh, regarding the medications that a patient has uh, before uh, undergoing um, ECT. Okay, so uh, first I'll start with consent. Basically, uh, ECT itself in, in, in the general population, they, uh, they are quite apprehensive to uh, do ECT especially for the patient, the, the relatives of the patient, because they consider this, uh, this procedure is quite scrutinizing because um, this procedure, uh, we give electricity, some, something like that, right? So they think it's scrutinizing people. So it's important before, um, uh, before we do ECT for the patient, it's important to explain about what is ECT. And then in the consent, um, uh, I tried to find an example of Malaysian um, hospital consent for ECT, but I couldn't find it. Uh, but basically in the CT, uh, they, it is a very detailed concern in which they explain about the reason of the treatment, the indications for the patient, and then the benefits, the risks that come with the um, treatment, and then alternatives available if the patient could not do ECT, and then regarding the preparation and the procedure, and then about that um, there is um, not guaranteed that this would be successful to the patient, and then if there is any need for continuation or maintenance of treatment after the ECT. And then uh, also there's a need statement that the content is voluntary and can be withdrawn at any, any time during the ECT procedure. So basically what I read in, um, in Kaplan, uh, um, uh, it is not common or it's not, nowadays it is not done for, um, for example, patients who are not uh, voluntarily want to do ECT. However, um, so most of the patients that um, are going to do ECT, they voluntarily want to do it. 
So, however, there are some cases in which um, involuntary patient, we can consider to give ECT. For example, if we let the, the conditions of the patient be, uh, it might cause a more harmful effect to the patient, for example, like that. Okay, and then next. So next is um, thorough history. It's the same as when we um, prepare or prepare patient for other procedures. So it's uh, it's similar. However, uh, um, you need to take psychic psychiatric history and function uh, evaluation as well. So first, um, sorry, medical history. So medical history, you need to ask about cardiovascular system, similar to to other things and some respiratory, so you want to assess if the patient has heart problem, respiratory problem, because um, although um, ECT is considered, generally is considered as a safe procedure, however, um, in older, gen older uh, patients, they can be, uh, have complications, for example, cardiovascular complications. Okay, and then next and Usually, is, the uh, anesthetist pun, yeah. um, they will do the pre ECT workout lah. Mm. Okay, next is psychiatric history and function. So um, you want to know if there is, for example, the patient come with um, uh, the indication is due to the schizophrenia. However, you need to take um, a thorough history of psychiatric history for you to find if there is other indications of psychiatric illness that you want to do for ECT. And then next is uh, regarding past ECT if the patient already did uh, ECT previously because you want to know if um, uh, you want to know regarding the response of the patient to, towards the ECT and then you want to identify uh, what is a suitable technique um, of ECT for them. The your voice breaking up. Okay, and then next. I had sebab tadi dia macam ada problem sikit. Okay ke? Dengar ke? Dengar, dengar. Dengar dah. Okay. And then, uh, okay, and then uh, past drug history. So, past drug history is very important because there are some um, medications that will be, uh, have um, interactions with the medications or the procedure for ECT. And then dental history, um, if, uh, if there is a loosening of teeth, basically, the, uh, okay, can we go to the next slide? Okay, uh, and then for examination, so, um, so you have to do psychiatric examination, basically a behavioral assessment and cognitive function assessment as a uh, baseline before you do ECT because uh, uh, cognitive function can be affected after you do ECT, and then neurological examination because you want to find the relative contraindication for the ECT. Yeah, cognitive yeah. impairment tu long term ke short term ke macam mana? How, how, how can the cognitive uh, function affected? Um, they can have a temporary memory loss. Yeah. It's usually short term, uh, maybe they won't remember what they had uh, or maybe what what was the conversation they had just before the ECT kind of thing mm -hmm. but it's not um, long term um, and sometimes the memory might come back and it's only short term mm -hmm. not like long term kind of dementia ke. if they have delirium things like that then maybe we need to review the medication if there are any drug drug interaction mm -hmm. between the NS punya medication okay mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, regarding the neurological examination, you want to find the relative contraindication for the ECT. For example, high intracranial pressure or patient who are at risk of intracranial bleed. And then uh, cardiovascular examination, respiratory. So dental examination, you want to look for like loosening or missing teeth. And uh, if the, the patient has uh, much on denture, punya procedure done. I think this is important for the NS. Is uh, uh, your bagian. Okay, and then uh, other reason yeah, other than for NS, NS maybe if anything happen they want to intubate. Kapa mm -hmm. if there's any respiratory depression, but for ECT, mm -hmm. why the dental examination quite important for us to know juga. 
Hmm. If they have any dentures, we need to ask them to remove kan? Because during the ECT, hmm. there will be muscle spasm. If they have dentures ke, if yeah, hmm. any uh, loose tooth ke, tertelan kan? They might choke on hmm. it during the ECT. It will be quite dangerous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So next, so next is uh, investigations. Basically, you want to do um, a full blood count, uh, baseline investigation, serum electrolytes, electrocardiogram. You want to see if the patient has an angina, upper uh, angina, and then chest X-ray. So spine, uh, spine or any uh, orthopedics X-rays, for example, is the patient because patient uh, who are psychiatric illness, um, they uh, can be prescribed with a muscle relaxant. So when given muscle relaxant, they can have they can uh, predispose to trivial fall. So they might have uh, injuries that might lead to um, bone fractures. So if there is any history of fall and injuries, you might want to do x-rays to find if there's any evidence of, of um, fracture. And then brain or CT MRI, if uh, from the history and examination, there is suspicious of neurocognitive uh, pathology. And then if there is any focal findings on neurology or fundoscopic examination, because uh, uh, if you suspect this patient might have um, an organic cause uh, or um, some to case of condition okay and then urine pregnancy test is usually done for uh, women who are childbearing age okay next spine x-ray we don't usually do it routinely mm -hmm. young others yes but not the spine x-ray and usually the brain uh, scan mri if there is any neurological finding can uh, yeah, we suspect we are worried if there's any uh, space occupant lesion that might cause, cause any further damage if you do the ECT like increase intracranial pressure kan? Hmm. So doctor maksudnya for apart from spine and brain macam spine and brain CT tu we only do if uh, based on our assessment lah kan macam the, the, the others we'll do it as routine FBC, BIOS, um, mm -hmm. EPG, chest x-ray memang routine pre-ECT usually we will do it uh, yang uh, urine pregnancy test usually on admission patient yang childbearing we will do it because we want to start antipsychotic we will do it before we start kan uh, but then spine uh, spine x-ray dengan yang CT scan MRI based on patient okay, okay. Uh, okay. so consultation with other speciali specialties is basically you have to so uh, so for patient with ECT not only uh, involving the psychiatric department, but also the very important is from uh, anesthetic consultations because you want to give anesthetic for the ECT. Okay, and also other consultations if indicated, if you know if the patient is underlying respiratory cardiology or this is like what doctors mentioned previous uh, during previous pre presenters. Uh, you want to stabilize uh, uh, stabilize the patient if the underlying medical illnesses is not um, stable. Okay, so so these are the important questions that you want to ask uh, to your to yourself or to, to to the patient. For example, you have to know what is the patient's um, medical or surgical anesthetic condition. So basically, it's, uh, it's from the history itself. And then what are the risks if the patient going through ECT compared to what if the patient is not uh, treating with ECT and then what can be other investigations that can uh, be given to the patient. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, these are uh, about medications. Uh, either you want to continue or to avoid uh, for the patients who are indicated for ECT. So basically, um, for patients who are already on psychotropic drugs, you can just proceed with the uh, drugs in the mon uh, in the morning before the ECT. You can just give the patient the, the, the drugs, and also uh, if the patient is on bronchodilators or asthma, eye drops, tropic, topical medications, and other oral medications like antihypertensives, steroid, antiglucides, you can just proceed with the medications. However, there are a few drugs that you need to avoid or stop before ECT because this. Uh, types of drugs can give uh, drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Um, 
uh, with the drugs that are given during ECT. For example, they can cause a uh, prolonged seizure time and then they can interrupt with um, initiating the seizure. So, uh, so you want to avoid drugs that will increase the risk of ECT or make it less therapeutic. For example, anticonvulsant. So in ECT, you want to induce seizure. So um, giving um, for continuing anticonvulsant for a patient won't be, uh, will be less therapeutic for the patient. And then um, for lithium, so lithium is also um, uh, can cause prolonged seizure. So uh, other than that, it can cause a confusional state after the um, after the ECT and also delirium. Like uh, Dr. mentioned, it's not just some medication that can cause delirium. Like, uh, and then for benzodiazepine, so benzodiazepine is uh, it, it has a property of as anticonvulsant. So it's similar to anticonvulsant. You wouldn't want to give uh, benzodiazepine uh, before patient do ECT. And then theophylline. So theophylline is a medication for asthma. So in case, um, because this is contraindicated for uh, ECT, so if the patient is um, dependent on theophylline, currently on theophylline, you need to uh, consult with the, the uh, maybe a respiratory department for how do you want to adjust the medication before the ECT. And then lidocaine, it can also uh, interfere with seizure, seizure induction. So rosepin, rosepin is a SSRI, SSRI, right? So it can also interrupt with the um, the the ECT juga. Okay. Um. Basically, there are other other drugs. There are a lot of drugs that are, uh, have drug to drug interactions. There are just some of the drugs that uh, I can mention. Okay, I think uh, that is all for me. Any question? Uh, doctor? Yes, I am. Uh, uh, I would like to ask, uh, in case a uh, patient uh, memang indicated untuk ECT, tapi dia tak kasih consent, so kita memang tak proceed lah kan? Nope. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, macam ni. Because for psychiatry, we have Mental Health Act kan? So for Mental Health Act, um, Nanti when you go to the ward, uh, you'll see we have form 1, form 2, 3, 4, type type of form. For form 1, it's a voluntary admission. Lepas tu ada uh, yang involuntary admission, ada MO dengan family yang sign, ada yang police sign. Lepas tu benda macam tu. Kalau yang involuntary admission ni, uh, akan ada magistrate yang akan bagi kebenaran perintah untuk dia duduk dalam uh, ward psychiatry. Uh, so that is a mental health act. Bukan kat Malaysia je, even uh, for international, like for, okay, um, in Australia, uh, there will be this board, apa, I can't remember what they call the board. Um, but they will have team of specialists, uh, a psychiatrist that will come, um, they, they will go to the ward and assess the patient capacity and they will certify, okay, this patient must be warded. And then if they need ECT, uh, the page, uh, the, this board will uh, certify, okay, this person cannot give consent but they need CT, so the board will certify. So, kalau kat Malaysia, we need, uh, if the patient cannot give consent, we will ask the family members. If family members give consent, then we will document in the case note, family members give consent. If not, we will ask another two psychiatrists punya opinion. Mm. Because if patient has schizophrenia, bipolar, they don't have insight. But we need to get them better as fast as we can. Kan? We already try so many medication, for example, it's not working. So ECT is the best option. We can give ECT. But you cannot just like, okay, I'm the treating doctor. I want to give ECT. I'll just deliver ECT. No. I need to have another psychiatrist who who's not in the same team, uh, meaning like uh, he need to come and assess and feel the same way. Meaning, if, if for example, if I don't like you, I think that, okay, I admit you uh, involuntarily, then I say you have some other mental problem, uh, then I deliver ECT to you. I cannot do that. Because the Mental Health Act is there to protect. Because I think 
uh, yelah during the world war kan ada uh, people hmm. yang being abused that way uh, ada political punya issues ke apa ke not in Malaysia lah like world war kat luar-luar negara tu and then uh, yelah being put in mental asylum uh, because they don't have the mental health act so yes we yeah, can ECT without consent but and uh, other ways lah family consent ada psychiatrist ni consent Um, okay, Dr. Um, Dr. Kaplan tu dia ada mention pasal dia guna term surrogate macam maksud kan? So, on, maksudnya dia ada kata surrogate uh, can give uh, consent for the ECT. So surrogate tu sebenarnya dia refer kepada siapa sebenarnya? Macam I think uh, mungkin Kaplan relatif macam tu ke? I'm not sure. Uh, Kaplan UK ke US? Um, I, I pun tak tak ni. So I guess hmm. it depends on the local setting hmm. tu. Okay. Yeah. Uh, itulah, even in Australia, I tak ingat There's this one term, it's not surrogate mm-hmm. I, But this one term juga lah huh? But then this board, like, I just call it board currently uh, But then this board ni, uh, uh, dia ada one yang decide Macam kat Malaysia, only two psychiatrists can decide They're not just like psychiatrists in the hospital This board, memang they are like not attached to any hospital They will go to different hospital and they will give their independent opinion whether the patient can be admitted without consent can be given ECT without consent Any other question? Okay, okay we can proceed then Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum Now, uh, we move to my part, which is the patient preparation and also uh, technique and also uh, adverse effect. Okay, first, uh, next. Okay, yeah, so uh, patient need to uh, fast uh, for six hours uh, as, uh, as uh, other procedure. Next, uh, We need to remove the any dentures or any uh, uh, object uh, inside the patient punya mouth to prevent choking and then and and also uh, prepare the line. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, for pre medication for this procedure, we need a uh, three type of uh, drug, which is a uh, Muscarinic anticholinergic, anesthesia, and also muscle relaxes, muscle relaxes. Okay, first, uh, for uh, anticholinergic, uh, we use this, we use this uh, to uh, minimize the secretion to prevent uh, respiration. So uh, the the most useful uh, drug that uh, we use is glycoperolate which is a uh, uh, cost less uh, uh, side effect compared to a uh, normal uh, anticholinergic which is appropriate. Okay, so next. Okay, next is a uh, anesthesia. We have uh, any type of uh, drug. Uh, but the most commonly used is we use metohexister, which is a uh, 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 also uh, reduce the uh, 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 post-fetal uh, publication. Such as okay. Mm, uh, sorry, I I am much laughed up. Okay. Mm, so in general. Hmm, there will be induction, sama right. macam surgery kan, there will be induction uh, You can use propofol ke, thiopentone ke, depends on the uh, NS punya preference And once the patient is under, then they will give the succinylcholine Okay, I rasa this slide, okay, this slide is very good Tapi I rasa kalau you present, I'm not sure whether your colleague can focus right now, I'm not sure You want to go through this slide ke, ataupun nak baca sendiri? Oh, the presenter yang decide. Yang lain ni. <laughs> I don't know. Sebab different people have different preference. Kalau I, 
slide yang macam like pharmacology and like there's so many drugs and then there's so many details I need to read on my own because when someone present and then there's so many things I cannot like talk that so I'm not sure you guys want to go through this slide uh, atau in this slide what is important in this slide what is important presenter this are, okay. in this slide I think <laughs> yang important ialah these are the options yang available uh, but from my experience usually the NS usually use either propofol or thiopentone but I think the most common one is propofol lah I rasa Hmm. Tapi, hmm. Uh, macam dia I rasa perfect. my uh, most, most of my NS I rasa they are using propofol So I think you need to understand how they are doing it Cuba tengok next slide Tak ada ha. Okay so and uh, The summary of this To put patient under, okay patient dah baring So the medication, patient dah baring you put all the uh, Electrode nak monitor the muscle uh, the, e, the ECG and then the EEG kan And then you put the NS will put the patient under Yang previous slide are do, those are the uh, Medication that can be used Usually propofol or thiopentone And the one I usually um, uh, I saw the NS using And once the patient's under they will use The muscle relaxant Why we use muscle relaxant can you tell me? Okay uh, Function of this uh, to prevent uh, bone fracture due hmm. to because uh, kan, kita induce seizure <laughs> yes we want to induce the 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 EEG but then because seizure will come up, come generalized kan so they will have the muscle the generalized seizure juga Relation. if you don't give the uh, the muscle Relation. relaxant uh, so the seizure will be very bad patient and bangun with fracture bone ache uh, bone ache muscle ache so usually we will give saxenalcolin lah. Hmm. So in summary, that 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 one yang you need to know. We give uh, induction agent and then muscle relaxant. I tak pernah tengok dia orang bagi tubocurarin ke, atracurium ke, I tak pernah lagi. Usually it's only saxenalcolin. Alright. Okay. Okay, that. Okay, this is uh, uh, for the medicine part. Ah yes, that's all. Hmm, can okay. Anyone and has any question? Tak ada for the time being. Okay, nak fikir dulu. Okay, proceed. Okay, next is uh, this is uh the three three type of uh electrode placement. Which is uh, we have a uh, bilateral, which is bi frontal temporal, and also bi frontal, and uh the new one is a uh, unilateral, which is a uh, Usually we put uh, on the uh, left dominant uh, brain. Okay. Usually right sided so, uh, lah. Usually, uh, usually okay. we have bilateral. Bilateral, there's two type. Frontal temporal dengan bifrontal. Uh, between these two, uh, bifrontal people say it has less cognitive impairment. So if like the patient has more dementia, punya symptoms, memory cognition, uh, memory impairment more, post seizure from the previous ECT ke, so we'll give bifrontal. But at the end of it, it depends on patient's preference. I rasa if like in HTA, bifrontal baru buat once um, last year, um, when I came back from uh, my subspecialty training, baru once lah kita buat bifrontal and it went well lah, Alhamdulillah. So most of the time, by temporal. Right unilateral, maknanya decision we only give one side. This is the best for uh, depression. Evidence-based, uh, right unilateral is the best for depression. Yang for schizophrenia ke bipolar, usually we give by temporal or by frontal. Okay. Yes. Kenapa kalau right unilateral is the best for depression lah? Evident based wise shows that way. Don't come okay. back to the original. Uh, so okay. evident based wise, uh, right uh, unilateral is the best for depression. But then the seizure threshold though. Okay. Mm. Are you going to to talk about uh, how to deliver the dosing after this? 
Uh, yes, but I don't really. You don't really understand. understand. What okay. Uh, do you have the slide? Uh, yes. Uh, next. Uh, Zira. Next slide. One more. Uh, okay. This one. Okay, uh, okay. This one I think you boleh baca sendiri, tapi I, 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 uh, uh, you can read on your own. I'll give the summary. Okay. Uh, the dosing. Uh, mana kalau kalau yang nak start? How, how? Where, where do you? Ada tak initiation punya dos kat sini? Tak ada. Okay. There's two ways lah. Okay, there's two ways. Basically, there's two ways. Uh, it's like sign base we can increase. Then you can. Uh, okay, tak okay. Uh, This is like over, the overall thing lah kan. Okay, macam ni. Um, yeah, in general, there's two type of machine and it depends on the punya setting couple. Uh, I don't think you need to know the detail of it. But, um, when we give the first dose, okay. Okay, patient dah under rasa semua kan? We give the first dose. We'll see whether there's any seizure or not. I prefer to use, usually in the ECT room, there'll be like a, a, a table that comes with the machine. Okay, itu evidence-based lah uh, how much you want to titrate. Machine tu dah ada its own uh, tombol bahasa Inggeris apa? Uh, no. No. Yes. Uh, has its own knobs to 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 adjust the pulse width, all those things lah. So they will come up with a total of how many, how much charge we give. Okay. So from there we we you follow je the the, the table. So when the patients dah under given succinylcholine, okay. Usually the NS will tell us, okay, doctor, um, um you can deliver now. So bila kita when, the, when we want to deliver, depends on male or female, then we follow, okay, male berapa, female berapa, and then we'll deliver. First time we give, no seizure for example, because usually we'll start very low. So when we start very low, uh, usually it might be below the seizure threshold, patient don't have the seizure yet. And then we will increase based on the table, okay. Some, some place they will increase by 5%, some place they will increase by 10%. Then we'll give like usually in one setting we can deliver like three times to get a seizure threshold okay seizure threshold meaning once we deliver patients start to have seizure as long as we as patient did not have seizure meaning we has not reached the seizure threshold yet lah okay we just give something but then does not it's, it's not enough to cause seizure yet okay so then, okay the second time we give there's seizure but then the seizure is not long enough, only like five seconds, then we need, still for us, it's not adequate, we need to increase further. Okay, so the third time we give, okay, cantik, it's like maybe 30 seconds. So that is the seizure threshold. Different people, different school of thoughts has different ways. Okay, the way I was taught, um, once you reach that supra threshold, that, that, that threshold level, if you do bilateral, you need, the next time, the treating dose will be 1.5 supra threshold. So, if now you're giving like uh, 15%, okay, um, mathematics bagi senang sikit. Uh, alamak, my mathematics cannot work right now. Okay, macam ni lah, if you give like 30%, next time, that is the supra threshold kan, 30%. So, next time, 1.5 more than this. 1.5 plus this one lah. Faham? But if it's unilateral, the treating dose is 6 supra threshold. It's not 1.5. Faham? Ah. Uh, that's quite technical, but you just ingat, kalau bilateral 1.5 is the treating, unilateral is 6 supra threshold is the treating. Itu je. Dah, that's all. Then you just give the same thing, but then with time, sometimes, okay, the first time you dah bagi 45%. Second, after two days, you give another ECT 45%. Third time, 45%. Then next week tu, you bagi another 45%. Eh, only 15 seconds je, dia punya seizure, kan? You can increase a little bit more. Sebab sometimes, um, once the patient, uh, the brain tu dah get 
um, stimulus tu, it can become quite resistant, you might need to increase it a little bit more. That's how ECT works lah. And for example, okay, how about tiba-tiba one day, okay, one day um, you give, you deliver the ECT, patient has 30 second seizure. The next day, 35. Lepas tu, 40. The fourth time, suddenly, two minutes. What should you do next? The, for the fifth time tu, what should you do? Should you decrease or increase or maintain? Two, two minutes is acceptable or not? Lama. Too long, okay. right? Too long. So, at a seizure, Lama. Because two minutes is quite long. You are worried if you induce um, status epilepticus pula kan? Uh, oh. So, uh, people usually they become afraid and they become, they will make it, uh, they, they will reduce the dose. No, actually you increase the dose because patient, to, you, you just touch the threshold. So, you just increase it. Now, then the next time memang the, 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 the seizure will become less longer. You give supra threshold, then you become less long. Okay. You need like in general, if you, are, you want to become a psychiatrist, then you learn the ECT to the lagi, like because the physics of the machine and all kind, uh, this time, this time, this time, this become the charge and then which one you want to adjust, uh, that one is like annoying lah, like really dry. That's why I think you just need to know the overall stuff. Even for MCQ pun, I think mm, those are the things uh, yang dia akan tanya in general. Uh, Doctor, saya nak tanya. Yes. Um, tadi, just now, Doctor mention yang one cycle, usually one cycle of ECT macam enam kali kita buat kan. Eh. Maksudnya enam yeah. kali tu, one plus three, 30 seconds tu, bukannya enam kali tu within one sitting lah. So the next few days to repeat lagi sampai complete 6 session. Yes. 6 cycle meaning 6 times. 6 times tu mungkin Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sebab in a week, usually we will do every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. It's not within just one sitting cukup 6 kali tak? Tak. Nah, one sitting tu, if we do like 2-3 times, it's because of you want to find the right dose. Uh, we call it titration. Uh, we don't call it cycle. That one we are calling uh, dose, uh, dose titration. We want to find the right dosage. What is the treatment dose for this patient? Okay. When the patient is older, the dose might be higher. Hmm. Okay, so that's I think in general about dosing for ECT lah. Sometimes when you you give ECT and then hmm, you think that hey, this is too high, maybe you will discuss with the NS or NS, can you please like reduce the propofol a little bit because sometimes propofol pun can affect the ECT juga. So you can discuss lah from your experience, you know what to discuss with the NS. And kalau NS tu, usually yang memang experience, usually working with the ECT punya team, they also know what to do, what to adjust, increase saksana kolin ke tak ke. Okay. <coughs> Any more question? This is like very dry lah. Last psychiatry, antara paling dry is like ECT. That's why I put ECT the first tutorial. Because I think as personality is quite fun because we can discuss about people and all. And grief is very short. Uh, I put ECT first because kalau ECT lah sekali, I rasa even I, I, I cannot cope. I cannot cope. Huh. Okay. Doctor, uh, I wonder, uh, for we got that bi bilateral frontal and temporal kan? But for mm. unilateral, is it at the frontal or temporal? And what is it ah. nice to be frontal or temporal? Kenapa tak boleh dekat hospital ke ataupun tempat lain? Evident base. And then can you imagine kalau hospital, patient tu nak kena meniarap dengan kita nak put all the tube, NS nak back. Kan, because patient baring. And then NS akan back until the saturation 100%. Because patient already on saksenal colin kan? Maknanya, they already stop breathing. And then when we give the current, uh, once okay, patient seizure dia, masa tu NS akan dah kelang kabut nak back again. Because the saturation patient already memang stop breathing dah after given sarsenacolin. So kalau macam occipital, I think at, kalau we try to do it, mungkin ada evidence because it's still a part of brain. Maybe for you know, patient yang ada vivid visual hallucination might work. So kalau kita give occipital punya uh, stimulus kan. But then, I think to do with 
the endless and everything. Hmm. So, is used is the by temporal, by frontal, and then the 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 unilateral one. One we put here at the temporal, and one up here at the parietal. Last ni. Dia adalah if you look at the picture tu, ada macam nak tengok from here daripada telinga ni, how to draw, imagine the middle line and then berapa cm ke tengah ni and then here. And then you really need to clean some of the patient kan macam quite dirty, unkempt, rambut berminyak with all the dandruff. You really need to clean, make sure there's no oil because if it, with the oil nanti resistant higher, then the deliver of uh, delivery of the current will be affected. So kalau nak buat dua-dua parietal pun I rasa quite difficult. The, the the resistance will be higher. Before you give the ECT, you have to look at the screen. They, they, they will show the resistance in how much. Sometimes if the, it's too low, it's too high point, the machine can, will not deliver the charge. So there's a lot of things. I don't know if you come for clinical. Oh, I think you're for clinical. Sekejap, kurang ya. Five. Kan? Yes, you're five, okay. You're five. You're five. Okay, you're fine. Uh, you're fine. Uh, I heard that macam you cannot go to HTA pula sekarang from yesterday's meeting so I don't know whether you are going to IOMMC ke apa. So if IOMMC, I don't think there will be any ECT. There's no ECT there. Uh, so just watch in the YouTube couple. Maybe they will teach um, how, how, when they give, what are the things they monitor kind of thing. Um. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that so kiranya kalau sebelum buat ECT macam tak ada necessity tu lah nak kita nak shift uh, kepala patient ke apa ke? Tak lah. Kesian. Tak ada. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Kalau lelaki okay lah. But then it's like female kan. Nah, dah lah with the diagnosis and all. Diagnosis schizophrenia and then balik from psychiatric ward. Botak. Nah, all the stigma even worse kan. No need. Nah, just Maybe we ask the patient to shampoo their hair before the night before the ECT, uh, and then we just clean up. Uh, just uh, okay lah. No need to to shift that area. Yang nak bagi by parietal ke apa? Uh, uh, by by tem apa? Uni tem uni. See. Oh, uni letter. Yes. Uni letter. Kalau by temporal dengan by parietal, memang there's no hair pun kat sini and here. Okay. Any question? Oh no, tak ada. So next topic apa? Anything else for ECT? Uh, complication lah. Uh, go through jap, slide yeah. ni. Go through slide jap. Uh, yang tadi gambar terbaring tadi tu, the, 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 the man. Um, okay, these are the things lah kan? Uh, uh, EEG. That we monitor. Uh, those are the things. Okay. Um, why do you think they put the black pressure cuff on the leg? They already monitoring the blood pressure on the hand. Kenapa nak letak blood pressure cuff on the leg? Hmm, due to contraction. <laughs> okay, basically it's because of okay, we give succinylcholine. So usually we will inflate the blood pressure cuff on the leg. Jadi the succinylcholine won't reach the left leg tu. Jadi when the patient having seizure, other areas of the body won't have much seizure except for the left leg. Jadi we can monitor the real seizure how long on the left leg. Oh. oh tak. Uh, if like uh -huh. you give overall, langsung tak ada seizure pun, it will be quite difficult juga. But in general, um, I think most of the time we don't really give, we don't really do this anymore because the succinylcholine that we give on is not that much lately. Unless my patient is very elderly, then we give more, then we don't really see the muscle uh, jerky movement semua tu, but we will monitor the EEG, the brain, the one that come out from the machine. Okay. Yang lain is about the same lah. To max for attempts per course. Some, uh, like me, I sometimes, if the NS is quite brave, I'll go up to four. 
But sometimes if the NS pun macam the new NS macam we cannot lah only two ah uh, then only two lah ah uh, the, the during the titration kan because uh, some NS yang very experienced they can go up to four macam patient uh, start breathing they give a little bit more of succinylcholine but not every NS um, brave or have the experience to do so lah okay. Hmm, kalau prolonged seizure, ah, itulah basically if like my patient dah more than 60 minutes, eh, 60 minutes pula, itu apa, 60 second uh, seizure, I will inform the NS. Okay, NS, uh, it's more than one minute. So, they will like prepare the diazepam and everything just in case it feels prolonged. So, once it gets to two minutes, um, they will uh, abort the seizure using diazepam. Okay. Okay, yang tadi we discuss about the memory side effect. Um, oh, lagi apa? Uh, any, any, anything yang important you nak highlight on the side effect tak? In general, um, in general, ECT is quite safe if yeah, yeah. assessment done properly and then during the ECT monitoring done elo elo and then after that pun um, post post ECT at the nursing bay, we monitor the saturation kan, tak adalah all the saliva um, tak ada suction ke apa ke, so usually it's a safe procedure it is, it's a safe, effective now patient yang has gone through ECT yang macam treatment resistant right. gone through ECT uh, they are happy with it okay so anything you want to surprise? Hmm. Um, I think uh, last slide. Last slide is uh about fractured. Hmm, same. Already mentioned before about the fracture. Okay, let's start. Okay, that's all. I have a question. Okay. Um, so, is it today, like Dr. mentioned just maximum? Hello? Yes. Hello? 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 Dr. Tadi dengar saya? Ya. Mustafi tak dengar? Dari Fira. Alright. Uh, macam Dr. kata tadi kan, usually we do it six times. Tapi, um, Boleh ke kita buat macam more than six times? Boleh? Boleh lah maksudnya um, ya. Sampai 20. Okay, we are talking now during hmm. acute phase. Minimum to me, one cycle. But, sometimes you will see, oh, dah ada improvement, stop at three. If to me, even ada improvement, I will still continue until six times. At least complete one cycle. Tak okay, I will complete at least one and a half cycle, two cycle, at least two half cycle lah. Uh, at least two. 12 session kan, 2 cycle. Kalau tak okay lagi, okay, extend a little bit more. Tapi kita tengok lah, how much is the improvement. Kalau one cycle and half improvement still not okay, then maybe I would consider closer pin ke, kan, yang treatment resistant treatment yang lain ke, is there anything else we miss ke, why is it not improving, then I will monitor the one yang doing, bukanlah monitor the doctor, monitor the tracing. Uh, is the seizure adequate, uh, all those things lah. Sometimes we wonder, eh, kenapa dah eight times but not so much improvement. Then we see that um, the tracing is not good, uh, might enough, macam maybe the duration is good but the seizure is not really good. So actually we need to increase the dose, inadequate seizure, uh, those kind of things. Uh. And then some patient, once we stop, okay, contohnya, okay, good improvement until six times. One cycle settled. And then sekejap je, after one month, relax try lagi and then after one month relax so he might need uh, maintenance ECT so there are patient yang datang for maintenance ECT monthly for example datanglah monthly every month datang every month datang for two years three years some comes for maintenance ECT two weekly but in Kuantan we don't have that but I think in UM, UKM, we have a lot of patients for maintenance ECT and they have been doing well. They are on medication but every month they will come for maintenance ECT. Okay, so they, they just fast from home from 12 midnight 
in the morning they'll just come they will do like blood investigation maybe during the follow up in the clinic the week before sometimes the blood investigation pun only like um, every six monthly uh, and then they, they come and let's do the pre ECT assessment in the morning uh, they do the ECT uh, after ECT they just rest in the ward until after lunch and then they can go home it's like they care Okay. And then my next question, uh, tadi kan tak ada contraindication for ECT, no absolute contraindication eh? Tapi yes. like for example patient tu dia pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, masih still kita boleh buat lah ECT ke macam mana? Yeah, okay, with precaution. So macam maybe we do all the assessment, ada higher risk untuk spontaneous abortion ke kind of thing kan? Uh, uh, early pregnancy ke, later pregnancy ke? Um, Maybe some other medication that ONG want to provide us ke. Hmm. Uh, meaning like if like the psychotic is so bad, uh, the risk of a, uh, the, the, the patient having an abortion is better daripada psychosis to maybe dia nak stab dia punya own tummy because the voice is telling that the baby is going to be dajal ke apa ke. Then, uh, and then family cannot manage that ke apa. Kan, that's a risk worth taking. Not like kita kata, oh tak apalah, aborted pun tak apa. No, but then kat rumah tak ada orang boleh monitor. So we will consider all the circumstances. We will decide dengan ONG juga. Then we will proceed lah. Hmm. Kan, kita akan tengok. Tapi tak adalah semua orang pregnant kita nak buat ACT kan. Kalau tak teruk. Nah, kita kena tengok circumstances waktu tu. Okay. Thank you, Rata. No problem. Uh, Rata. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what is the layman term for ECT? Meaning in uh, doctor punya practice, doctor explain ECT tu macam mana dekat patient? Macam ECT kan to medical? Hmm, macam bagi current je lah. By right, memang kita cakap ECT. Sebab kalau kita cakap bagi current ke apa, orang akan fikir macam-macam sebab diorang dah tahu dah macam. Especially, ya Allah, if you watch Malay movies, Bukan boleh movies je. If you watch Hollywood movies yang like a few years back, it was really scary kan. There's no anesthesia, no prof of all, no saksenakoli. People just like give kan. Uh, macam it's so inhumane. People will like become very scared. So um, it's not easy but um, usually uh, family, if they can see that the patient is not improving, they are concerned too. So, sometimes they are more open for suggestion during that time because they are also kind of desperate because they can see that their family members not improving. So, um, we will use the term ECT itself and then we will explain how uh, with details. Okay, like we will put them to sleep, like nak pergi operation, uh, dia akan tidur, dia tak sedar. Uh, and then we will give current and current tu bukannya uh, a very high current just to induce a little bit of the seizure in general it's like to reset the brain uh, there are patients yang have been through this a lot uh, and then they become better uh, all those evidence kita provide lah even though patient not that educated family not that educated we use the terms yang they can understand according to the education level ke apa but in a way like macam whatever we are teaching here tapi make it simpler to them and, and try to make them understand. Sometimes we give them time to think lah. Mm. Okay, thank you Doctor. No problem. Uh, doctor, I have next question. It's regarding, uh, for example, in uh, the patient, we give, uh, we prescribe ECT if the patient we, uh, present with high degree severity of depression or psychotic symptom or pattern features, for example. So, my question is that Tempoh wajib tu memang dua minggu lah doktor memang enam cycle tu yang Monday, Wednesday and Friday kan mm. uh, for two weeks and then uh, that is lepas tu lepas patient dah uh, buat ECT for the Monday tu for example for the first time memang lepas tu dia memang terus okay ke memang patatonic features dia, psychotic features dia uh, high apa CBDD tu memang terus tak ada langsung ke ataupun dia memang selasa tu dalam hari Isnin ke Rabu tu dia boleh ada lagi that severity? Dia yeah, uh, changes tu depends on dia memang varies on from patient to patient. Some patient after first ECT you can see like macam oh dah nampak dah she can smile for example. But there are patient 
after first day mungkin sleep je a little bit in, uh, improve. Lepas second ECT, maybe appetite still uh, yang dah a little bit improve. But still duduk, not talking to everyone. After third or fourth ECT barulah keluar lah sikit. Baru you can hear the voices. So the changes tu memang varies. Hmm. Uh, it depends on patient to patient. That's why um, you need to monitor the changes tu. Uh, whether the ECT is working or not. If to me, kalau even after fourth ECT pun dah nampak improvement yang macam he's going towards recovery compared to medication yang I dah bagi sebulan tak jalan, I still continue the ECT lah. Maybe I continue after one cycle pun. Kan? Uh, tapi after that one cycle, no improvement at all. Whether I nak continue or not, uh, nak add on ke adjunct ke apa ke, then I'll decide during that time. But to say after one ECT change terus, Tak semestinya, depends on patient. I have a patient, uh, psychotic, dia ada nihilistic punya delusion lah. Uh, schizophrenia with a lot of depressive symptoms. So, anyone remember nihilistic? Baca tak? What is nihilistic? Yes. Nihilistic uh. is that everything is going to end and uh, everything is going to end. Macam kiamat lah. Dunia di penghujung. And then nihilistic tu sometimes not just about kiamat dunia je even self. So my patient ni, dia punya problem uh, dia punya body organ semua mati. Dia even ada macam stab wound on his abdomen because dia, he felt that the the intestine semua not working. So if I give ECT today, that afternoon when I see him, he'll be like very happy doctor, thank you. My brain is start working again. My bowel is working again. Then Tuesday, morning still okay. Tuesday afternoon, because we are going to give ECT on Wednesday morning kan? Tuesday afternoon, doctor, I feel like my brain dah stuck. I I feel like my intestine stop working again. Less than, less than 48 hours, the effect. And then we, whenever we give, it's always like that. But after ECT, dia memang happy. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Eh, so petang, stop working again. So that patient memang we have to give closer pin. On top of that ECT, and then on top of that, we have to add on some other things with the closed pin and ECT. So it differs from patient to patient. Okay. Okay, doctor. Tapi dua dua minggu tu, walaupun dia dah kali keempat tu dah okay, tapi still kena cukup enam kali baru stop kan? Ah, uh, selalunya kita akan sambung. Kalau saya memang saya akan sambung sampai enam lah. Sebabnya kalau dia only anti four partial improvement, maknanya there is room for improvement. ECT has shown to improve in this patient. So why not we just continue a few other sessions to make sure whether he can improve further or not. Kan? Maknanya sebab usually we start ECT because work, medication dah tak works. But ECT shows that it's working. So we continue a little bit further. And then after two weeks, memang kalau dah memang totally dah okay. So kalau memang dah okay, tak ada, tak ada repeat dah lah ECT unless there is Recurring episode lah doktor. Uh, kalau okay, I feel that macam, oh okay, this is good enough. I think whatever targeted symptom um, yang ketatonik tu dah tak ada ke apa, then I'll stop. But if I feel like macam, eh ketatonik dah ada sikit lah, still nurse kena feed uh, this patient. Still mandi, um, sometimes kena push kat one hour baru dia mandi. I might extend another two, another three, then I review again. Hmm. It's a clinical judgement. Okay, okay, thank you. Any more question on ECT? Ada, uh, ada satu question. Kalau while waiting, while waiting for the macam course to be completed, do we still continue ubat? Sambung. Except okay. for ubat yang tadi yang that might cause problem to the ECT. For example, benzodiazepine. Because we use benzodiazepine to abort seizure. If you give benzodiazepine the night before ke apa, then so we might give higher dose of ECT. Kan? Because they are taking benzo, difficult to have seizure, then we might give another higher dose of ECT that might give problem with all the muscle ache lah apa. So, ada certain medication macam epilim, uh, lithium because patient can have confusion. Uh, so, there are certain medication we're off. But antipsychotic ke apa, usually we will continue. Okay. Dekat Malaysia, uh, higher limit dia berapa doktor voltage? Hmm. Alamak. Sebab okay. saya pun selalu ikut jadual yang 
terlekat di dinding itu. I can't really remember. Nanti um, I'll try to, I think I save the the table in my uh, PC. Nanti I'll try to share with you guys. Okay, but then you cannot give like too high because machine tu dia ada safety measurement. Uh, you cannot jump. You put everything max. Uh, still the maximum charge tu ada max dia. Uh, it will be. It can't be more than certain limit. Kalau tak memang you tekan charge pun it won't charge. Okay. Okay, if okay, then I think maybe we take like a five to ten minutes break, pergi buat kopi or anything, then we continue with personality disorder. Hopefully, it's more lively for the personality disorder punya uh, seminar. Okay, so ten minutes break. See you guys soon. Okay,